Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Palki Sharma Upadhyay, and it is my pleasure to be moderating this session. It's a very important conversation on power and partnership leading in the post-COVID world. 2021 is the year to reboot and revive the global economy. Business leaders and government officials are looking at a new investment blueprint. What should it be like? What kind of strategic partnerships will drive inclusive growth in the years ahead? That's what we'll discuss in this session. Let me introduce you to the panelists right away. With me here on the stage is Sarah al Suhaimi, Chairperson Tadawul and CEO NCB Capital Saudi Arabia. Ajay Banga, Executive Chairman, MasterCard USA. Frederick Udea, CEO, Societe Generale Group Paris. David McCormick, CEO, Bridgewater Associates USA. And Noel Quinn, CEO, HSBC UK. Welcome to all of you. Sarah, let's begin with you. Uh, the post-COVID world will have its own set of economic uncertainties. How are investors adapting their strategies to, to deal with this evolving situation? First of all, thank you very much for having me here and the greetings to my fellow panelists. Uh, hopefully we'll see you here in person next year. Um, COVID tested companies and tested it leader, its leaders in different ways. Um, when it comes to companies, companies that had a more sustainable business model, companies that were more resilient, that had enough agility to actually adapt to a, a very shocking situation that changed the way that they do business, some to a huge extent, some to some extent, and also tested the ability of uh, its leaders to make quick decisions. We've seen the difference between companies that adapted quickly and uh, just realized the reality of what has been happening with this pandemic and companies that a uh, little bit took their time. And um, the, third, the second thing is how those leaders communicated with their stakeholders, whether it's their employees, their customers, their uh, shareholders, on what are the measures that they're taking. We, ca we see clearly that many companies really won by being agile and fast in decision making. Um, and I think this opened uh, the minds of uh, each business leader around the world on how to do uh, business in a different way that is uh, broader and that is not confined by borders. Um, you know, for us in Tadawul, and this is one of the uh, main topics today in FII, uh, ESG is on top of our list. We have been working, uh, we are working right now on developing our own ECG standards for our listed companies to comply with. And uh, we see the demand on this increasing from um, uh, local and international investors. This year we have seen an increase in the number of international investors uh, in Saudi Arabia. So that also encourages us to uh, um, focus on sustainability more. Right. Uh, Ajay Banga, what are you, your views on the economic impact of, of COVID and the changing investment outlook? Well, thanks for having me. And uh, you know, I think that, as you know well, there's a fairly wide and uh, serious impact across every economy. Really, in some cases, it has disproportionately impacted uh, minorities and women and the like because of the nature of which the businesses and the jobs they were employed in have got disproportionately impacted by the lockdowns and the impact of COVID. You kind of describe for our I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Banga, we, will, we seem to have an audio problem there. I think 2021 will also be the year when we have to figure out technology better. Let me go to Frederick Odea. It's been called the year of the Great Reset. Uh, would you say public-private partnership is going to be an inherent part of this reset? And what kind of new rules are we looking at for this new playbook? Uh, not really a novel, well, but first a new of all, uh, good, uh, good evening. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be part of this panel. I hope 
you can hear me well. Yes. And of course, I'm delighted to, to greet uh, everyone. And we are all missing being in uh, Saudi Arabia. I, I hope we'll be able to travel soon uh, and be back. Well, certainly in this crisis, what we've seen, uh, and uh, you know I'm the CEO of a bank, is uh, the need for uh, an immediate collaboration, a very strong collaboration between uh, public authorities, public governments, central banks, and ourselves to help uh, the economies to fare uh, this extraordinary crisis. And I would say, I, I think so far we can say uh, across geographies that I think we've done a good job. And if we were seen as the source of the uh, financial crisis uh, 12 years ago, I think we, we are seen overall as part of the solutions. It was, of course, to implement uh, government schemes, supports to the, to the clients, helping for their financing. Uh, and again, of course, the crisis is not finished. We have now to bring structural solutions, but I think we did a good job. And then when I look in the midterm, uh, and already uh, uh, it was uh, mentioned a lot, this crisis will accelerate certain trends. Obviously, the digital transformation, and in our sector, it's, it's very clear, but also, as it was already mentioned, ESG. And when I think about what has to be done uh, reg regarding ESG, it's around, first of all, probably defining the right framework and uh, when I talk about this, you know, in, in Europe, we talk just about, for example, the so-called taxonomy, the, the, the words, the definitions of what we talk about to have a clear regulatory framework, but also, of course, then to design financing schemes, uh, a lot of the public money to fuel uh, the rebound in Europe, for example, is related to green projects. And of course, as a financial company, we will be able to implement that as quickly as possible, meet, organize the markets, meet offer and demand. And again, in that field, which really is accelerated by the crisis, where reality now is taking off, I think we can do a lot of uh, good job by cooperating efficiently with uh, the public authorities and the public bodies. I'll come back to you on the point of digitization, but I want to take this question with Sarah first. Uh, what is the growth outlook for the Gulf region in particular, and what steps are financial firms and investors taking to optimize successful development? I think um, the GCC has proven to um, now uh, making strides towards developing their countries. Uh, especially in Saudi Arabia, as uh, His Royal Highness Prince Abdulaziz mentioned to you that um, uh, in reference to the energy of youth, I think we have uh, everything to uh, make advancements uh, for our nations and, um, and, our con and the world. Uh, so um, in terms of uh, opportunities, I think uh, the Public Investment Fund uh, once the, the, the recent announcement they made about their strategy showed how much money they were going to invest in, the, in Saudi Arabia. And when um, many of those projects happen in Saudi, it's not just about Saudi Arabia. It's about the whole region. Um, it opens up jobs. It uh, changes the uh, structure of some businesses. Uh, we add new sectors that were not there. And uh, I think uh, we have seen that many uh, of uh, the ambitious goals that uh, we had, uh, we actually achieved and some uh, already started working on. And uh, I think that, uh, uh, I'm going to speak more specific about uh, Tadawul, we are uh, going uh, through um, planning for major uh, uh, investment in digital and technology that will help our end users and, our, and the ecosystem as well. And this is on top of our agenda. Right. Uh, Ajay Banga, uh, digitization has been a major enabler during the pandemic. And for many, it has been a hard reset. Um, as uh, Frederick Udia just said, that this pandemic has accelerated certain trends. So digitization has brought more people into the formal economy but it has also exposed the digital divide. Uh, uh, 
I'm told, uh, yes, digitization is a real challenge. I'm told we've lost the link with Ajay Banga. So let me take this with, uh, with Frederick. Frederick, your thoughts on how this, is, uh, this trend is redefining the financial sector and how it contributes to inclusive growth? Yeah, I mean, uh, for now close to one year and maybe a few additional months ahead, well, a lot of people in the world have used much more digital channels to uh, consume, uh, to uh, get information, to get services, to access their banks, for example. And certainly, in our view, uh, the acceleration of uh, the digital transformation is going to, uh, to uh, accelerate. Uh, and it's true, you know, we operate in very different regions of the world, in developed uh, markets like uh, in Europe or uh, in emerging markets like in Africa or in Russia. So we see, of course, take place at a quicker pace and we need to, of course, get ready as a company uh, and as a sector to, of course, uh, bring the right services, uh, with new channels, and with it, I think it will help financial inclusions at the end of the day. Right, we'll try and go to, uh, to David and uh, Noel in a bit, but Sarah, in the meantime, if I, if I could ask you, when we, talk about, uh, when we talk about transformation, when we talk about rebooting the economy in a post-crisis scenario, what is the kind of responsibility that the private sector should bear? I think um, PPP is a very um, important uh, element for uh, advancing business and advancing uh, projects. And this is something that we will need to see more of that will lift uh, some of the burden uh, from uh, governments. I think uh, today with uh, so many regulatory reforms that happened uh, in Saudi in terms of um, uh, regulations, the ease of doing business has improved. In fact, uh, Saudi Arabia was named uh, the fastest uh, uh, nation with improvement in ease of doing business. Uh, we went from um, uh, the 90, I think, first or second place in 2019 to the 62nd place in the world, which is a huge advancement in 12 months. And uh, this is just uh, one of the um, uh, evidence that um, the massive regulatory reforms across so many sectors um, has started enabling the private sector uh, to uh, start doing business. All this came in a very challenging time with the oil prices, all what happened in the last uh, few years. But I think uh, we are resilient enough. And one of them is the COVID situation. Of course, COVID hit every uh, country and every business in the world. And the results are different. And I think in Saudi, we, we really managed to contain it. And uh, many businesses are as business as usual uh, today. Right. The pandemic has also had an unequal impact on, uh, on societies and businesses. Some have felt it more than others. We talk about uh, more inclusive growth going forward and sustainable growth models. Uh, but of course, businesses also have to look at profitability. So what is it that is, that is driving them at the moment and what is the best way to achieve that winning balance? Um, I think um, many business owners realized, even if they knew, but if I'm talking about small and medium uh, businesses, they realize the importance of digitization. They uh, realize the importance of being able to actually sell their products online. And why would this make a huge difference to their business? So businesses that were faster to adopt these forms of technologies um, um, actually secured themselves uh, to an extent from the uh, setbacks because of uh, COVID. Some other businesses, of course, will face a different challenge. One of them, for example, is travel or um, some, of the, some kind of traditional retail business. But I believe that um, the more agile uh, business leaders are, the uh, faster they can adapt to a world which uh, is behaving today in a way as if uh, we, are, we have no borders anymore and uh, geograph uh, geographic location doesn't matter in terms of communication. And uh, you know, also the, introduce, uh, the introduction of um, 
more and more uh, artificial intelligence in many businesses, especially in healthcare. Today, we saw also the um, um, uh, Peggy Johnson speaking about different initiatives they're making, and this is all really fascinating. Um, and I think uh, COVID uh, uh, has um, benefit in terms of pushing people really to think out of the box and adopt different ways of doing business. Right. I think that's a, that's a good and optimistic note to wrap up on. Let me, uh, let me ask you my last question. Innovative, innovation is also about exploring opportunities in a, in a crisis situation. And uh, we, we've been talking about how things have changed and how people have adapted themselves. What, according to you, are uh, the most exciting opportunities that this pandemic has created for businesses? Um, I think uh, the way people think about healthcare will be very different going forward. Um, entertainment, uh, technology, digital services. Um, I think uh, each and every business uh, will go through its own uh, revolution uh, because of what COVID uh, forced those, those sectors to start uh, uh, thinking and changing their uh, traditional ways. I think uh, some sectors uh, will lag behind uh, just because um, they're maybe too capital intensive, uh, things that uh, cannot uh, be virtual or can't use uh, uh, artificial intelligence. Thank you, Sarah. And I wish we could, uh, we could yes, have uh, a word from the other <laughs> panelists, but, but maybe some other time. We do hope that the comments and observations uh, give a roadmap to financial leaders, both in the government and the private sector, to explore new models, partnership models for sustainable and inclusive growth. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.